like to welcome you to the um, October 21st, 2014 of the Northampton Transportation Department Commission. Uh, my name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the chair of the commission, also the city councilor uh, for Ward 3. Um, I know that there are six members present here tonight, which is the bare minimum for a quorum. Um, and so hopefully we will, we will maintain that as long as possible. Um, and if not, we will deal with it at that point. Uh, but for the moment, I'll call this meeting to order and also announce the audio and video recording of this meeting. And to start, uh, let's announce um, ourselves with brief introductions, starting with our Director of Central Services. Dave Pomeranz, Director of Central Services. Rich Cooper, Citizen. Gary Hartwell on the Board of Public Works. Wayne Fai, Director of Planning Sustainability. Ned Huntley, Public Works. I'll look forward to the position here. Okay, thank you. And the first um, bit of business we need to take care of is someone needs to be heroic tonight and step forward to take minutes. Uh, because Mr. Hargraves usually is so kind to do that, and he's not here tonight. So please don't all fight over it. Um, great honor of taking minutes, but we do need someone to uh, do so. Um, I will do that. Will you? Thank you very much. Great. Um, so we'll begin with uh, public comment period. And this is an opportunity for members of the public to speak on any subject they wish. Uh, we ask that you keep your comments to about three minutes. Uh, just in terms of what to expect, often members of the public will come to the commission with requests of various kinds. Uh, it's not always the case that you will leave with an answer. That's 100% certain, but you should know that uh, I, as chair, or other members of the commission will follow up with you um, afterwards. Um, it's also not the case that we engage in substantial back and forth, but members of the commission may ask questions uh, pursuant to your public comment. So is there anyone who would like to speak on, on any issue tonight? Sir, hey. come to the podium and state your name and ask Thank you. Uh, my name is Frederick Fierce. I'm an attorney in town. And uh, my wife Ava and I are building a house out at 1253 West Hampton Road, which is Route 66. Um, I've brought along a picture, or a few pictures I can show you, but uh, there is a driveway coming from our house uh, out onto Route 66, and I'm just going to go around and show you very quickly that this is us coming out here. This is Route 66. Uh, let me just show you all that. Wait, wait, take care. Close the back half off. Um, this is where you come out of the driveway. That's Route 66. And uh, you notice there's a curve, uh, probably 100 feet down the road on either side. And I have pictures of that as well. So what happens is you come out of the driveway, and a uh, pre existing driveway is two other houses on the driveway. Uh, you really can't see very far up the road in either direction, so you look right, you look left, you see nobody, and a couple times as you're pulling out, a car comes whipping around the corner. It's supposed to be 25 miles an hour, but people don't go that fast. Um, right across from the driveway, there's a, I think it's an electric pole, um, and we've talked to the electric company, and they've said, sure, if you want to put a mirror on either side, you, you can do that. I've got some other pictures that would show you how Without the mirror, you get a very little view, but if you look and see what you could see if you stood at the pole, you'd be able to see pretty far down the road. So I'm afraid that either one of us or somebody visiting or delivering to us is gonna have an accident there because, sure, I'm gonna leave those if you want. Uh, is gonna have an accident there because you simply can't, uh, can't get out fast enough if there's a car coming really quickly around the road. So what I'd like to know is, um, do we need any kind of a permission from the city? And if so, how do we go about getting that? Or can we just put up the, uh, the mirrors on our own? Okay, thank you. Questions from the commission on this topic? Um, well, I certainly don't have the answer for you right now. Uh, I think it's something that uh, we could follow up about offline and um, 
work with you to, to try and find out what we can do. That's, That'd be great. That's okay. Thank you. I have, yes, have you already looked into uh, the mirrors themselves and different kinds and things like that? And no. No. Okay, no, so this, but, this is a pretty initial foray. Well, we've been thinking that we're, we're about to get our CFO within the next week. We've been working, we've owned the land for four or five years. We've been building uh, for a year or so, and you know we're like at the point where we're actually going to be living there, and so we like to deal with it. But uh, no, we haven't looked at the mirrors. I'm happy to get any, any kind, quality, Etc. Possible, but I, I know that it, it, it'd be great to be able to see. Yeah. And the main the main goal is for you to be able to um, come to the end of your driveway, basically stop, take a good look in the mirror, to get a sense of it's safe. And then yeah. And, and, and actually, I would say as much as me, it's other people that are visiting because you, until you've actually made that turn once and had a car come up whipping behind you, you just don't realize how fast the traffic is and how short a distance you can see if you look right, look left, and pull out again. Uh, so I'm afraid somebody else that's visiting us will uh, you know, get rear-ended coming okay. up. But the mirror would not be on your property, is that correct? No, the mirror would be across the street, um, and, and uh, there is already a pole there. So we would just put it on the pole, and they said, sure, it's fine with us, but it's a state road or a city road, you may need permission from someone else. And so as far as we could tell, this is the group that we need to come to it. Maybe not. I don't know. The pole is a utility pole? Yes. And it, it holds a light or a telephone? I think it's a light. It's not a light, but it holds wires, electric wires. I understand it's Western Mass Electric. Any other questions? What's the address of the house? 1253 West Hampton Road. So it's on the left side as you go out? No, as you're going from Northampton out Route 66 heading to Outlook Farm, it's on the right side. Oh, okay. Uh, and there's a driveway that's about 400 feet flat going off to the right there. And that is still North Hampton, obviously. Yeah. Lawrence. Okay. Thank you very much. Just just just, can, I, can I give you my uh, contact yes. information? Absolutely. That way. Thank you very much. I appreciate your attention. Now, is there any other public comment on any subject before we launch into our agenda? Okay, um, seeing none, um, we have approval of the minutes. However, we don't have the minutes from the last um, meeting prepared yet. So we'll have to skip that for this meeting. Um, reports from any of our committees? Anything from the bicycle and pedestrian subject that you want to share? Uh, so long ago, I can't remember what time. It was last week, I wasn't there. Uh, no, basically we're updating what things are going on for that. Nothing from the commission. Um, and no representative from the parking committee is here today, I don't believe. Um, so we'll move on to the DPW updates. Uh, Cleveland contract, Sylvester Road uh, should be repaved uh, by the end of this next week, if weather permits. But uh, look at the weather, it's questionable. Uh, the race crosswalk on uh, North Street should be if by at the end of this month, but again, if weather permits. Uh, crack ceiling contract, um, so pretty much they have this month and next month to complete uh, all of the work and they still have a good amount of work that needs to be done. So probably in November will be a lot of crack ceiling. Also, new contract coming out, new South Street uh, concrete sidewalk, uh, which is pretty much uh, moving a crosswalk, building new ramps, and the sidewalk, section of the sidewalk, will be advertised tomorrow in Central Registry and Local Gazette, and bid opening on November 5th. Sorry, where on South Street is that? South Street, uh, next to Pulaski Park. Crosswalk and Smith Block of Crosswalk from Pulaski Park will be moved so to the bridge, exactly to the bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, should be safer. Can, can we talk about that? Yes. Okay. Please. And, uh, well, why don't we finish your update sure. and then we can ask for sure. And Easter Avenue will be paved uh, in the beginning of this month. That's for 
Mr. Robinson. Yes, you know the Bicycle Pedestrian Committee's opinion was that it should not be moved. Um, and I'm not aware of our having discussed it here unless I missed it. I'm not aware of it. Yeah, I can provide some information on that. Um, for, first, a question did, did the subcommittee say it should not be moved or that it should just be kept? I mean, it's not being eliminated, it's just being the location is being moved. So they met some time ago and said it should be eliminated. At the last meeting, so last week, they discussed it, and there was probably absolutely nothing, no consensus. I would say some people thought it should be eliminated, some people thought moving it south is just fine, some people thought it should be where it was. So I don't think it was a consensus with the, the follow-up discussion. Okay. Among the people who said it should be eliminated, Wayne, so I missed that particular meeting. Among those people, um, would you say that um, one of the issues uh, for them was it should be eliminated only if it's going to be just paint. In other words, there was a, I've heard a concern that um, that if it's not going to be a raised crosswalk similar to the one on Route 9 at uh, the uh, at uh, College Lane, the entrance to Smith College, if, it, if we if we don't do it like that, then we shouldn't do it at all. I, I have heard that on the bike path committee. So Devin was the one who was most, who's also remember this, was most passionate about we should just get rid of it. Uh -huh. That it can't be safe. I was fine with it moving south. Trying to remember who argued for staying put. Somebody argued for staying put, so it really was all over the place. Okay, maybe just describe what the rationale is why you think it would be safer at the bridge and how far removed that is. It will be, uh, the road is narrower at that location. Also, it's only one lane uh, in north direction. So, uh, right after crosswalk, approximately 50 feet from the crosswalk, we will open up a second lane, which is right lane. We will be able to take um, uh, barrels out. And the travel lane will be narrower. Right now it's between 13 and 14 feet wide. We will make it 11 feet wide. So it's just safer. So mm -hmm. I, you know, it's very much a compromise. <clears throat> I, I met with the mayor, with uh, Ward 4, Councilor Shara, um, who I, I think I can speak for her and, and say originally she was hearing from her constituents and, and was of the mind that it, sh it should be eliminated. Um, and so moving the crosswalk down to where the, the road is one lane was seen as a compromise because you maintained a way to get across the road in that general area, but you, didn't, you no longer had the problem we have. You know, the, the reason why the crosswalk was so dangerous is because it was too late. Mm -hmm. So it was a compromise. Um, it, it did not, it was never proposed to bring it, to bring it uh, for, to this commission for, for approval. Um, but that's the backstory that I know. So uh, as we know, Nelson Nygaard's, um, the city paid a tight sum to Nelson Nygaard to drop a design which uh, kept uh, the travel lanes at one lane each there at the, where the current crosswalk is. Um, so we have a design that could, I think, accommodate pedestrians and motorists safely, um, but that's, uh, that's not the one that you are choosing to go with. Well, I don't believe Nelson and guys work went back that far on no. New South Street. Well, they talked about it, right. but they didn't, they didn't their, their formal design was further north. Right. So are you talking about a treatment that would, that would be raised, a raised crosswalk? No, no. Painted. No pedestrian refuge in the middle? No. Pedestrian activated stoplight? No. I think we're asking for a disaster. I think we're setting people up like bowling pins to do that. I think it's it's more at high speed. It's closer to a highway mentality there. It's farther from downtown. I'm, I, under, I agree with you about the, the no width. That's great, but I'm just concerned that that we're making a true mid-block block crossing that has no proven desire lines. Right now we have strong desire lines between Sultan School and Pulaski Park. I think those are going to continue. I think people will continue to cross there. I'm, I'm just concerned that we're, we're going the wrong direction. That we're, we're basically accommodating drivers uh, by uh, demanding that we have multiple travel lanes there um, at the expense of pedestrian safety. Just a quick question though. Is, is your concern, because originally you were an advocate for maintaining the crosswalk. 
But only if it were raised with additional mm -hmm. safety features? Yes. 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 Um, I guess the only thing I would add to the conversation for today is, if, you know, since it's just paint, I mean, we could in the future do a, a more substantial, we could we, in, in theory, revisit in the future. Um, I, I think that, Alex, you said it was going up again and visit due on November 5th. And would we do the work this year? Yes, it has to be, uh, the work must be done before December 30th. And when, that's where, where, is, where is that intersection design in the scheme of things years out? Yeah, years out. So, so that, we hired Nelson Nygaard on the hope that they could, in essence, sort of do similar things they did on Elm Street, to tame the intersection without having to move the mast arms. Um, and they basically had a, what I think was a great design for the area, but it's a much more complex project than needs having to move the mast arms. So that means it's beyond their contract, and they're not pre-qualified with Mass DOT. Really? So it's also beyond what they can do. Um, so the mayor's approved us going to bid to hire an engineer who would design the whole intersection using, you know, my, Nelson Eggers' work will, it will inform that process. Yeah. I think one of the complications is, and I love it, so I was listening to Chris and Nelson Eggers whatsoever, I'm totally in favor. But what they're doing is, in essence, tightening the box. Right. And that means it's going to be harder for large trucks to go through. And that means we're going to get a design exception for mass DOT. And I think that's an absolutely good thing. But I think it's also a guarantee we can get that design exception. Um, and so that's part of this issue of could we do the work now and keep the crosswalk there? I just think it's a longer process to, to go through all that stuff. Any other discussion on this topic? OK. Um, Done with DPW updates. Right. Okay. John, this one is non crosswalk issue. Uh, Alex, as you know, Central Services took advantage of the crack ceiling project mm -hmm. this year. You know, we did two parking lots and we did two schools. Uh, what's going to be your time frame for putting that contract together for the next year? Just so we can keep that in mind. Uh, probably in the winter. Probably okay. could help in March. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have a conversation. We'll talk about that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a couple of visitors here who are, are pressed for time. Um, and I think they're both pressed for time, but I, I promise Ms. Shaughnessy, um, and if you wanna come and make your, your presentation, um, this corresponds to item 15. Um, with regards to handicapped parking space behind the senior center. And after you, we'll go to Superintendent Provost, who is also pressed for time. Well, thank you very much for letting me step forward. Um, I have a Commission on Disability meeting um, in a few minutes. Um, so anyway, thank you. Uh, so I'm requesting uh, additional handicap parking spots at the Senior Center. Currently, we have four. And I would like to increase that to eight. Um, and I do have some pictures that I can pass around of our current spots. And um, also, we're I'm requesting we have eight more. And the purpose of eight more would be to assist those individuals who use our center, both as community members or as participants in our program, to be able to um, park more freely um, because they're either disabled or unable to walk a distance. So it would be very practical to have additional handicap spots at a senior center. So you're looking for a total of 12? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I so just from a procedure standpoint, you don't control the parking lot? I guess I would assume you don't need to ask anybody for this. I'm really not sure what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Is it, I, I, mean, I, I think to make it enforceable, you'll have to create an ordinance uh, in city parking lots for handicapped space okay. specific. Right. Plus, plus you have the uh, provisions in the Artificial Access Board regulations that will talk about X number of spaces in a lot and what percentage need to be designated as handicapped. So that would be one thing we want to look at. Right, it does, it is four. According to um, the ADA, we mm -hmm. only need four spots close to the door. I'm saying we have participants or we have a population that four handicapped spots is not enough, it's not adequate. 
I guess I would then turn that around and say, if you had 12, what would that do to the non-handicapped parkers uh, who were looking for spaces in the, in the lot? I would say that they would be walking a greater distance. It would be a healthier thing for them to be able to walk further to get to the doors. So, you know, for example, somebody coming into the fitness center at 8.15 in the morning um, who parks close to the door probably is not one of the people who needs to really park that close to the door. I know that in reality, everybody likes to park close to um, whatever entrance they need to get into. That's reality. What is the total number of parking spaces you have? We have a total of 78 parking spaces, some of which we share with Cahill Apartments. And um, we also have the ability to use some additional parking uh, lots in our area. In our that includes, the 78 includes these handicapped spots? Yes. Current and future? <laughs> no, for 78 both. is what we currently have. So four of those, so 74 plus four is okay. what we have. Seven. Any other questions or, or comments, Shaughnessy? Um, is there is there a consensus about this? Is something we have to study more? How does the commission feel about the idea? I'm fine too. Your call makes perfect sense. Okay. Is that so? Um, one thing we could do then is just next meeting come back with an actual ordinance so we have something to actually debate and vote on up or down. Would that be? But I'm sorry, but I thought maybe I missed it, but are the four that are there now already established by ordinance, did you say? I don't know, but I imagine they are. I would mm -hmm. imagine they are. So maybe enforceable. Oh. In the city ordinance. I'm not sure. I mean, unless they were just designated once they built the center in 2007. Unclear. Uh, right, we'd have to do some research on yeah. that. Well, I guess the question then is, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, if it's inform, if it's only informal now, do we have to make it formal, or could we just proceed informally? In other words, if it's, if there is, if it's not by or by ordinance now, does it have to be ordinance for the I, I, I understand the way. Whether it's yeah. Well, either way. That's something we should investigate. Okay. If Do we recognize Nancy mm -hmm. Forstall for this about handicapped parking in city owned parking lots? Yeah, Nancy. I was looking at the um, schedule for on street and off street parking lots for handicapped parking, and it, the senior center I can't find designated, so I would urge that it all be formalized into an ordinance so that it incorporates yeah, all okay. of the spots. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you. We're really in the business of codifying reality in this, in this commission. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get recent ways to be passed. Um, so just to be clear, so, yeah. so this is a city-owned property. Yes. That's, mm -hmm. that's right. why it needs to be an ordinance because mm -hmm. the handicapped spaces on private property are, you, you can't park in them. It doesn't need to be an ordinance for that, right? Most of our handicapped spaces are enumerated in, in our ordinances. But the city, the city isn't responsible for enforcing this. The, so, the so it parks behind your business, you can tell it, but you can't call Nancy and ask us to get a ticket on it. Oh, I thought it was a state law that you could not park in a in a handicapped space regardless of where it was. So if you're if you're at Walmart and parking in a handicapped space, I thought that you're in violation of a of a law. And it's just you can't take that. Right. Uh, right. The police department does go up to Walmart um, and Big Y stop and shop and, and does write tickets up there because the um, public has the right of access. So then why do we need an ordinance? If, just, if the property owner can just put a sign on and they can get access. Well, because this is a city owned property that we're talking about here. We definitely should have it in the schedule in the city ordinances and have a definite ordinance listing it. At least put it in the schedule and uh, incorporate it into the whole list. Is that so the, the parking enforcement officers can react? It, but the police could react without that ordinance, you say? Well, I would I would bring the chief into this whole conversation, but the police department at present does go up and right. write tickets up at uh, you know, Walmart, Stop and Shop, Big Y, that sort of thing. 
I mean, there are, there are two enforcing authorities, one the right. our city and the other the police department. Or your, your department and the police well, department. Well, we, we gain our authority under the police department. The, oh, law okay. for, the um, parking enforcement falls under the police department. That's okay. where the authority line goes okay. through. But there's, there's um, still really no reason to not put it in the code of ordinance. Exactly. It should be in the schedule. So that would be my recommendation that we bring that for next time to do something one way or the other. As hard as you want. We sometimes pass this thing to say we will to sponsor it and then it goes back to whoever is actually writes his ordinances. So it's not going to come back here. And I got to see a piece of paper in front of me to be able to vote for this. Well, I do. I, I think that we, if we're going to vote on something, we should vote on actual language. I know that's more of a preference, but that's okay. Okay. Anything else on this? Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Patty, if you look after the order, let us know. Okay. Okay. Yes. Superintendent Provost, thank you for your patience. Um, this corresponds to agenda item number nine, the visiting traffic calming application number three. Thank you very much. And before I start, I'd just like to introduce Joy Winnie. I'm sure that most of you probably already know who she is, but she has uh, the history on this, this topic, which I realize goes back at least to the previous superintendent, if not further, from the time when the bus stop was changed from the corner of Cordes Shelley and Pine Street to the corner of Lily and Meadow Street. Uh, I know that last year um, the superintendent was asked to evaluate the safety of that bus stop and um, the determination was that the bus stop has to remain there because buses keep getting stuck when they try to travel on Corticelli Street. However, um, I received a call from a parent early on in this year um, concerned about speed of traffic at that intersection causing a danger to students and she said that this um, excessive speed had been observed by a police officer on duty. So I followed up with Jody and asked um, if she could uh, get some more information about the observations that the officer made. And she confirmed that traffic there was um, in excess of the posted speeds at the time of um, students getting on the bus in the morning. It had increased um, patrols in that area to try to address the issue, at least in the short term. And in doing further research on this issue, I realized that um, in 2010, this same intersection had been identified as um, particularly prone to excessive speed. Um, in the, in the um, information that I included in your packets, there's a um, sheet where a, a speed study was done at this intersection. And I'm having a little bit of difficulty interpreting it, to be honest with you, but it looks like 85% of the traffic was three miles an hour or more above the posted speed. So I think that um, the concern is a legitimate one, and I would just ask um, for your consideration in doing something to help calm the traffic at that intersection. Thank you very much. And I, I'd also like to, to welcome Councillor Winnie. Um, not from Ward Three, but from Precinct Three in East Hampton, in your other, in your other hand. So, <laughs> but the more you know, three representatives we have. The better. <laughs> <laughs> but any any comments or questions, for the Superintendent? For Ms. Well, so one thing I, like I did know, yeah. one thing I did notice, the data is a little bit older on this uh, traffic calming application, and after that, obviously, Florence Fields has been built. Grove Food Northampton has been built out, and I don't know if there's been changes in traffic patterns since then, that activity. Also coupled with um, no parking signs on the, the uh, what side is that? It used to be the north side, no, west side of the street. Those signs have gone in place also. So I'm not sure where all these different changes might have effects out there. Florence Fields is not open for business yet, but it will be next spring, summer. And I think that will dramatically change traffic out there too, at some point, an increase in traffic. There's something that the data currently doesn't capture that. Are, are you suggesting we should get new data? I think we should get new data, uh, see if there's been a difference as it exists now, and then also look at data collection after Florence Fields open for business. 
and see if there's any substantial changes. So we took the time to gather new data. Um, it seems like that it is a good idea to make a more informed process. I mean, does it, it's certainly from your perspective, this has been pending for quite some time. It wouldn't necessarily overly or unduly burden the traffic counting process, I wouldn't think from your perspective. So no. I think that would be a prudent decision, personally. Did we put the crosswalk in down at Court of across Meadow Street at the request of a resident on Court of Sully probably 10 years ago? That was a new crosswalk that went across there. That was never there before. And it was the same thing as getting kids across the road safety and on the way to the bus stop and to school. Any, any other questions or? So is, is this something that you could organize in? Uh, probably spring time or problem. Yeah, once we get into freezing temperatures, the traffic counters may not work. Well, I'm saying spring time probably. Yeah. Right, if we were to collect data. Yeah. It's also have to apply more equipment to do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do anything this year. We can try. We can try. And are there kind of partial measures in part of this application and the original recommendations that we could do without or do sooner? Um, sooner than starting the, restarting the process of gathering more data? Um. So it looks like we're doing police enforcement, correct? Mm -hmm. We have signage at the crosswalks. We don't have a pet paddle, but we have pedestrian signs at all crosswalks on that own. probably miss a good part of the season for painting center lines at this point. I want to see if we can collect the data, see if there's still a speeding issue out there. I mean, the 85th percentile, it's, it's three miles over the limit. It's not hugely over the limit or grossly over the limit. But, you know, showing that 85% of people are driving with eight vehicles is a safe and reasonable speed, which is pretty close to the speed limit. Did you mention uh, crosswalk paddles or something that might be easy to install? There was a suggestion here about uh, pedestrian paddles being on them, but they come out in the winter. So in another month they, they would be taken out anyways. I see. We did those recently, the heavy duty paddles for uh, Bridge Road for JFK School. Yeah. They've held up to the test time so far, okay. but um, they'll be removed probably in another month and they won't go out until springtime. Okay. But, but painting needs, knowing that your, your envelope for painting is, is closing, as you point out, um, is there any sense in, in prioritizing in this case? Because when we look at traffic counting, we should prioritize the areas around our, our schools. Um, is painting something that you could you could explore for this year, or is that, again, something that you think should I can work? talk to Rich, I would superintend about that. might be good if we can make incremental progress and, and then gather more data for a more substantial um, project later. <coughs> I think that's cool. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you for still, your time, too. You're still 60. You still have 60, yes. Okay. December uh, 31st. Ms. Burke, thank you. Thank you. This is my annual request. Uh, this is for free parking in the city's municipal lots um, on first night. Uh, it does not include free parking in the parking garage. And it doesn't in include free metered parking, um, although I know that last year after this group approved the free parking in the municipal lot, 
the mayor surprisingly announced free parking all over town, but I don't think that that's, an, that's not what I'm here to request. I'm just here to request being able to publicize the fact that people are permitted to park in all of the municipal lots and Smith College lots during uh, first night activities on the 31st. Questions for Ms. Ms. Burke? I don't see how we can improve anything for Smith College, but. No, no, Smith College just lets it. Oh, okay. We, okay. Right. We, basically, what happens is we publicize and say parking is free in all municipal lots and at Smith College lots, but they've told me that's okay since it's free too. I think that uh, that date at Smith College would be a holiday. Yeah, so they're closed. No, so, yeah, on weekends you can park in any Smith lot, you can park in any Smith lot after 5 p.m. Uh, weekends is 5 p.m. Friday night until 7 a.m. Monday morning now, holidays. They're not open. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? <laughs> and it's very complicated. It's <laughs> pretty straightforward. So, um, the exact recommendation we're voting on, does someone want to speak it out loud? And so if someone wants to speak it out loud with a motion, then we'll see if there's a second. And what's the best timing for this? I mean, is it from, from noon on the 31st? It, no, it's not. There's never been a time attached to it. It just says on the 31st. I think, again, what happened last year was I believe that this board said from 10 a.m., but then when the mayor announced that it was just free parking all day, nobody paid attention to it. But last year was the only time I saw a time attached actually to it. Um, you know, I have no objection to a time being attached to it, although to be realistic, I wouldn't make it 10 a.m., I would make it 9 a.m. I would make it to the point where people couldn't, like just our own residents, shall we say, use but this, this, this is a Northampton uh, event, so the fact that people are allowed to stay and park for free. I'm not sure why last year the decision was made that it should be from 10 a.m. But I, wasn't, I was not at this meeting last year. Okay, so we, any other questions or discussion on this? Okay. So, someone help us. Oh, Ms. Forrest, love you. Yeah, Traditionally, the, the uh, confusion has come. Um, people go to the first event. And then if you say that the first event is at 10 o'clock in the morning, let's say, and then you say the parking is free from noon on, which is what happened, I believe, last year. There was some confusion the year before that then people are coming in they're trying to get their kids in here for an early event which are the earlier ones and then they park and they get tickets and then everybody gets all confused and upset so i really would urge that you consider if you're going to say free parking that you make sure that people have plenty of time to get here and park and get to these events with their kids right. or else it's going to turn into it's not just uh we run into it's not just visitors and people and kids it's also volunteers who are having to be at venues and so we, we really just don't want the people who are, who are supporting the event to get tickets on the day we can avoid that so should we just say all day and not have a time that sounds like you've done that in the past refreshing are there times during the day or overnight that you are allowed to park in city lots without um, pain. Right. After yeah. 6 until 8 in the morning, except for the two parking structures. Any day of the week. Any day of the week. And all day on Sunday. Let, let's just say all day. Yeah. It's just easier. No, I, what, I, what I was yeah. concerned about was, you know, then after midnight, was that going to be a problem? I think if we weren't incorporated. Most people don't January really oh. yeah. pay attention to it. And of course, if it snows, it all becomes a bit of a, we don't say, we don't ever say that about December 31st. Because then other rules go into effect. We don't, we don't have any enforcement. Uh, our body, our commission, really has no enforcement. But it seems to me that we can vote to recommend that the city allow free parking on that day. And that that's a, essentially we support that idea. And I think that's really what we can vote on. That's what we normally do, I think, if I understand correctly. 
So I'll make a, so, I can make a motion. So would you make a motion and, and state exactly what the motion is? Yes. Uh, I move that we vote to um, support the idea of free parking on December 31st for the purpose of first night to uh, make it a successful event. Okay. Is there a second? Any discussion? Ms. Burke, is that sufficient? Yes, thank you. <laughs> um, you come all the way just for that. I know you used to just be able to dial a number and somebody say, sure, free, free <laughs> <park."> <laughs> <laughs> But it's out. okay. <laughs> well, we're grateful to you for all the, all the work you do also year in and year out. To thank put you. On thank you. Thing. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just one, one follow on with to that, that discussion. So, for logistics purposes, basically, we'll make sure that all the lots that have been signed the day or so before, clearly stating that it's free parking time. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be information on his ad in the city seven. website as well. Great. Seven three Excellent. Thank two seven. And it should be soon because okay. that's what um, I'm here. Moving swiftly along, we have two ordinances here that are kind of peculiar because you've seen them before, I think. Um, th these are a pair of ordinances that have to do with removing a parking space in front of uh, the watering hole on Pleasant Street um, where it currently has a bag over it. And my understanding is that the Transportation Department Commission approved it last year, um, but it was not carried over into the new council session. So therefore, it entered into a, a mystical void, and we, we, couldn't, we don't know what happened to it after that. So uh, out of an abundance of caution, uh, the council referred, it, referred this anew to our commission, um, and it's something that uh, I'd like us to consider and voting on again. Is there any need for me to to read it? Um, you know, basically, it, it changes schedule one. The first ordinance changes schedule one, parking prohibited at all times. Um, it, it increases the, the distance because we're eliminating a parking space there at the corner of Pleasant Street and Michaelman Avenue. Um, and the other one um, changes um, Schedule 8 on street parking meter zones um, correspond. Oh, and um, does everyone remember the history of this? Uh, this came from the Ward 3 Association looking to have better visibility from the crosswalk down there and the rule of this one space would hopefully accomplish a good part of that. Let's, let's put this on the floor. I, I move that we move these two ordinances as, as a group. Is there a second? A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Um, so we have these on the floor as a group. Um, and is there additional discussion from Mr. Mullins Mr. just said? That, that's my understanding as well. And of course, it's been, the meter has been bagged uh, for over a year. So, and I believe the purpose is to increase visibility for that crosswalk is. So. so for clarification, um, this would be on the, the essentially moving, removing one meter parking space from the right hand side if you're heading out of the city. Mm -hmm. Correct. Just before the crosswalk. Yes. Correct. So give about an extra 20 feet of additional sight line yeah. for the pedestrian. Will there be any kind of crosshatch painting on the on the street itself, or just a no parking sign? There will be a no parking sign that going backwards is what it would be. Who, who would remove the meter? Would that, would that be the, the parking division would remove the meter. Okay. Any other comments on this? Nancy, any comments on this? Um, we've lost two parking meter bags off of it that have been. Oh stolen off of it and the barrel has been thrown in the back of various pickup trucks and driven off with so I would urge you to do something as soon as possible and to make it a very visible no parking zone. 
Council President Bill Dwight is the only one I know of the pickup truck personally. So. <laughs> check, check his shed to see. Bill Miller. Exactly. Um, okay, any more discussion on, the, on this pair, pair of ordinances? Is there a motion, a positive recommendation, or any recommendation? Second. Positive recommendation, and is there a second? second. Mr. Hartwell seconds, and Mr. Lowenthal firsts. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? Okay, thank you. Um, now we have a, a bunch of discussion items. Um, some of them were bumped from last time when we had a substantial discussion about lighting um, in public places, which was a, a good discussion and one that took a while, so it bumped some agenda items. Um, Please. Can go I interrupt for a second? Please, I did not write down who uh, made the first and second on the motion for uh, first night out. I think Mr. Hartwell made the motion. You made that first. Yeah. And it was seconded second. by Mr. Cooper. Great, right, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, you know, one item from last time was pedestrian safety near Ventures Field Road. Um, in Henry Street and Montview Avenue. Uh, I don't have a map with me, unfortunately, but everyone can, can visualize it. Um, it's a place where you have a strange confluence of, of streets. Henry Street comes in, and Montview comes in, and Adventures Field then comes in and goes over the, over the levee there into the meadows. And in the wake of this, there's kind of a large uh, space. It's not quite a road, um, and it's just kind of a, a large, paved area and residents have grossed many ideas. I don't see any here in, um, in the room tonight, but over time residents have grossed many ideas, like even including a, a little traffic circle. In fact, there was a resident from that neighborhood who came last meeting, if I recall, and mentioned that in public comment. Um, but I added to this agenda just for discussion, um, if there's any thought or institutional knowledge um, on tr possible traffic calming for this, this section of, of Northampton. Um, I would really be interested in your thoughts and, and ideas on the subject. I don't believe we have any data that supports anything down there at this moment. Okay. And, you know, as far as I know, any ADTs or vehicle counts or pedestrian counts or what's going on down there. Okay. As far as you know, the farming activity is a, right. is a concern of safety down there. Right. I don't know. You can add totally, <coughs> excuse me, are you aware of uh, significant numbers of uh, crashes? Not uh, crashes, yeah. just an anecdotally, you know, I, I, a lot of people come off of Pleasant Street, um, especially some who are, may not be familiar with the area, they're kind of looking for an alternative way to bypass some of that traffic sometimes, and head downtown, so people get lost and end up there. So I know it's questions of speed and so forth. But it sounds like perhaps the thing to do is wait for a formal traffic calming application if, if one comes in. Um, and there's no there's there's sidewalks places. down there. So right. Everyone's walking in the street if they are walking. Exactly. Bicycling. Right. Okay. I mean, if that's where we leave it tonight, um, that's, that's fair enough. Unless you want to inform us yourself from familiarity of what yeah. the situation is like there. I mean, I, I sort of expected some some residents tonight to fill in some of those blanks, but but seeing none, yeah, I would be content to to leave it there for now. Revisit it in future time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, another Ward Three concern <laughs> is. Uh, um, this is a question that has to do with um, turning signals uh, from Bridge Street. If you're headed out of town and you're at the light right where it, the Coolidge Bridge is. And I, I've heard from several people that, you know, that they'll go that way very early in the morning and there will be no one on the road, but there'll still be a lengthy light there. And I just wanted to raise brief, briefly with the commission, um, you know, in, in what way could we talk to Mass Highway about the timing of the lights there, possibly to improve them, make them more efficient for the early morning hours. Um, if, the, anyone, if anyone has any experience talking to Mass Highway about about traffic timing signals, traffic signal timing. Well, uh, obviously, 
that area is slated to be significantly right. changed with the construction of roundabouts. A roundabout. I don't know what the, what the latest timing of that is, but my guess is that Mass DOT is not going to be eager to invest a lot of time and person power to change the timing. Well, they're actually out there this past weekend working on a little glitch out there. So yeah. uh, they went into a flash mode and tied up the intersection yeah. oh, right. pretty good. Um, according to the TIP, uh, that project is financing or proposed to be financed in 2018. So it's a few years away still. So but I can, I can email Al Stegman, who is the District 2 Highway Director. So I just need to know what exactly the specific complaint is so they can look at it and say there's something wrong with the lights. Right. So we have specific knowledge that the left hand turn single going on the Damon Road has got a long queue length that's inappropriate. Yeah, that's that's the complaint roughly. But you know, I'm happy to to, to flesh that out with you outside of this commission. If we can make the inquiry. That would be great. So that probably takes care of that agenda item as far as the, the commission is concerned. Um, unless there's any other discussion on this item. Okay, thank you very much. Um, this is this is a more universal interest, um, number 12. Uh, this is important for us. Um, a, as you probably know, that the mayor, the, the charter requires the mayor to issue an administrative order, um, basically setting up all the operating agencies of, of city government, um, sort of anew, you know, and you, you've read about some of the changes maybe to the Board of Public Works and, and other substantial changes. Some of them are not that substantial. Um, there, there's a printout of the order if you, if you haven't read it, and it's something the City Council has the opportunity to approve. It, it does take effect even if we choose not to approve it, however, and the City Council has kind of an up or down vote on this, um, rather than the ability to tinker substan um, substantially with it. But the Transportation and Parking Commission is, is one of the multi-member bodies that is recreated. Um, along with this comes some ordinances that, among other things, delete Chapter 22 in the Code of Ordinances, which establishes this commission and establishes the parking commission. Um, and so those things will go away and be replaced um, let me find the, the page number for you if you haven't already. Be replaced with this administrative order um, that will create the transportation and parking commission. And so it's on page 22. And you know, at first, at the first reading of this is um, there's not that much change here, uh, except it's it's much simpler. Um, there's some verbiage in, verbiage in the uh, in the ordinance that we have currently that kind of sets forth our mission in, in more detail and this sort of thing. This is very straightforward of who's on you know who's on the commission, how many. Um, one change is that we'll have 11 members now. We currently have 12 with one vacancy. This brings us down to 11. Um, another change is the board of health will no longer have a designee. Um, in the case of Mr. Hargrave, certainly if he wished to continue serving as a citizen, you know, that would be allowable under this, this order. But that's another change. Um, Maybe he wants to stay on and take minutes. And, um, and, and those, those are kind of the contours of, of, this, of this change. Um, but um, it's something that we should discuss in this commission. And we should also discuss specifically how we want to handle our, our subcommittees, which we would have to, I think, create fresh. Um, and that leads me to these draft rules that I, I threw together. And when I say draft, I mean they're really, they're really draft. Um, it's an attempt to set forth rules for the Transportation Parking Commission. It's an attempt to um, set up some subcommittees, which you know, I, I think I would personally really like to get going and, and turn them into active working subcommittees. Um, some of them are, like we have a great bicycle and pedestrian committee, a great parking committee, um, but the transit committee, for example, is um, essentially defunct and we might consider reviving that. Um, so I brought these four 
to you today um, just for discussion. Um, I think it's, a, it's an important thing we need to weigh in on at some point. Question? Does anybody know why, uh, what the rationale was for eliminating the Board of Health position? When I spoke to the mayor, I, you know, I don't think it was a decision he made with, with any great, you know, with any great weight behind it. Just that, um, the, you know, the, the rationale for it, I guess, wasn't as clear as, we definitely want central services on the commission. We definitely want the DPW planning. Board of Health has, I guess, a more uncertain nexus. You know, um, healthy initiatives. Yeah, uh, that was the main. That was the main argument, which I think is a good one. Healthy initiatives being is that that's walking, bicycling, yeah. okay, transportation choices, choices right. that are very significant on public health. Mm -hmm. So you know, and again, it's something that the mayor put forward. Um, and the council, according to the charter, the council can up or down vote it, but um, but not tinker with it. So uh, it might be something that we could express, you know, a wish for a revision in the future, because this administrative order is something that the mayor could do every year if he or she wanted. You know, but that's my knowledge of that change for the board. Question, Ryan. So when does this all become effective? It's post the council vote, correct? Correct, or within 60 days. Right. There's no 30th. Okay. 60 days. Right, because if, yeah, there's a deadline for the mayor to issue it, and then 60 days within that. Yeah. In the case of TPC having to re reform or reactivate the subcommittees, is there a time frame for that? No, because we, we could just have none if we wanted. That's, that's my understanding of this is, you know, there's not going to be an ordinance that establishes any. Okay. It's, it's for us to decide. Um, and some of the general language in this order, at the beginning of the multi-member body section, um, on page, yeah, on page 14, item 1.11, authority to establish subcommittees. Each multi-member body may, by a majority vote of its membership, establish subcommittees of the multi-member body for the purpose of addressing a particular issue and so on and so forth. So that's what we could consider doing. Um, you know, one of the changes that I, I think we should consider in our commission is we have these subcommittees, but sometimes there's not enough overlap there. For example, on the parking committee, none of us, well, I guess until recently, what Director Fiden sat on the parking committee, but he, he resigned from um, is, that, that, is that correct, Sue? Yeah. Um, none of us, besides Director Five, sat on the parking committee. And really, these subcommittees should be committees that include us, because we're the, the parent body. Um, please. Um, question. So, uh, I have not, uh, I'm aware that there are big changes at DPW and the Board of Public Works that has been retooled or eliminated. Becomes a public works commission. Becomes a public works commission. But there's so, so right now Gary, Mr. Hartwell, is the representative of the Board of Public Works, and there's no provision that I see on page 22 of section 24 for replacement of that position. Is that, that correct? That's correct. Um, yeah, Mr. Hartwell would be in a similar position, to Mr. Hargraves. Um, since, since there's a, enough citizen members where we could reconstitute this commission exactly as it is today with its current membership. You would be a citizen member. Because we currently have three citizen members and it's going to four. Is that, is that correct? We currently have three. Okay. Myself, uh, Mr. Cooper, and Dickie. Okay. And so those two vacancies could be filled by Mr. Hartwell and Mr. Hargreaves. Exactly. Presumably. And I'm not, I, I know, I, I'm not sure I don't think that there's going to be a, I don't think the mayor's going to uh, <clears throat> renominate everyone. I don't think we all need to be reappointed. I could be mistaken on that, but um, I wouldn't envision a substantial change, you know, membership. 
There may be people who are dying to get out, but you're going to have to invent your own reason. Another change I think is important is just as um, Alex sits up here at the table, it would be um, wonderful uh, to have Nancy Forrest all up here with us as well, um, the, if you want to. Um, since you always add so much to our discussions and have um, a tremendous amount of experience and, and knowledge, and the administrative order the mayor has is clear that your advisory to the commission, um, just as you know, Alex sits up here, and you wouldn't have a vote, but you could you could join in discussions in a more formal way. I think that would be an, an excellent change as well. I don't have to take minutes, do I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that changed. That's good. Oh, yeah. Actually, the administrative order uh, directs the uh, Department of Public Works to provide the clerical and technical support. So we're actually working on hiring a new staff person to do meeting minutes and other various work that we have in the department that we've been lacking on. So. Which, which is excellent. Well, um, what, what, what's your pleasure? I mean, I, I think that it is important for us to consider and pass rules and consider the subcommittees we want to retain and how we want to change the ones we have currently and maybe reconstitute them. Um, I guess without giving it more thought, my suggestion would be that as soon as this all becomes formal and voted on after November 30th, that the TPC look at the, the subcommittee structures and move to formalize those um, and get them back up and running and to, so it doesn't drag along. Mm -hmm. you know, we're not still dealing with this three or four months down the road. Right. And the thoughts or comments? My, my only amendment to that is, I mean, you know, I think let's, so it's, it's October 21st now. We'll have one more meeting before November 30th. Um, you know, it, it would be, I think, excellent if we came to the next meeting. You know, if the commission wants to use these draft rules as a starting point to have that discussion, it would be good to have a substantial discussion on the specific words in, in, in these rules at our next meeting. Um, and we can make some of those decisions. I plan on also meeting with some of the, the subcommittees as well over the next month. Uh, well, the parking committee, the bicycle and pedestrian committee, if they get on your agendas, to get their feedback. So that would be my request is, I mean, if we could uh, come to the next meeting with, with really substantive changes to, to these rules, um, I think that would be productive. Are there any in particular that you would identify already as needed? Rules? Yeah. Well, I, I, there's, I wrote three pages of rules. Oh, I meant uh, changes. Oh. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so what you're asking for is feedback on those rules? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Because I think ultimately we'd have, to, we'd have to vote on them to adopt them. Right. So like currently, I was going to vote for me if I'm not here. That's the way the ordinance is set up. Oh, interesting. Your rules don't have that in there. Ah, okay. That's interesting. And like I said, 1.3, we should be having a clerk take the meeting minutes going forward. Mm -hmm. do, do you have other comments? Uh, they're mostly um, just some spelling. That oh, spelling. Do. That clerk will take care of <laughs> Okay. Well, what's what's the uh, what's the pleasure of the, of the commission? Should we move on for now, or should we discuss this further today? Or okay. I'm sorry, Ryan. No. Can you just remind us, please? Uh, we have bylaws. And these were di directly descended from those bylaws. Is that correct? Or, or did? Or no, did they're not directly descended from the bylaws. In fact, to be perfectly honest, I don't think I. The, the commission has bylaws. I, I don't know where are they kept. We have an ordinance. That's how we created. Yeah, the ordinance has has rules and 
And so I've read that. Yeah, but I, we, we don't have a separate document of not our practices. So that's the only document detailing our practices. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Structure. Okay. I'm glad I admitted that I've read them because they don't exist. <laughs> I was worried they existed. <laughs> All right, the ordinance will go away, and so therefore, you know, we'll have to reestablish things. That ordinance was what I was thinking of. Oh, okay, so, excuse me. Sorry. No, it's totally fine. Okay. Well, I, I would propose then that we continue this to our, our next meeting and we come to uh, substantive conversation. Okay, so should we move on? Um, Councilor Klein, who cannot be here today, um, suggested that we also continue the traffic calming on Bridge Road Island. And she's not here, and that there aren't any uh, residents. I don't believe there are any residents here who wish to talk about Bridge Road. Okay. So if that's okay with the commission, we'll, we'll continue that as well. Um, and I'm, I'm not calling for formal votes on continuing because I assume that's okay. Um, unless, I mean, do you think we do need to have formal votes on continuing items like this, or is it? Well, it's part of the record. Yeah. Why, why, why don't we do that? So what I'd like to do is say, first, I, I move to continue item 12, um, discussion on reorganization. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Pomerantz, second said. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And I'll do the same thing, move to continue traffic calming and bridge road to our next meeting as well. Is there a second on that? Mr. Cooper seconds that. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Excellent. Um, the issue of, of parking along Bridge Street School, um, the question came from, from Principal Beth Joquette of Bridge Street School. Um, and I, I kind of wish the police chief were here. Um, I think she was concerned that occasionally tickets are dispensed when people park to, to pick up their, their children. I don't know if, Nancy, if you have any knowledge of that. Um, tickets have been issued um, based on the neighbors in that area. Um, people have blocked driveways while picking up the kids from the school or have parked right on top of the driveway. Okay. So that's where the complaint um, Lies for that. Okay. But so as far as just parking and picking up their kit, running in, getting their kids, and bringing them out, I mean, that's been pretty much standard procedure. Oh, I see. As long as I'm. Okay. So there's no parking ordinances in effect in that neighborhood right now? We do. Sure. Have, What's that? We do have an ordinance for it. Uh, it's pretty much no parking uh, from uh, first crosswalk next to the concrete island. Mm -hmm. and pretty much all the way, almost all the way to the Market Street. So you can't park there. But you can park from a crosswalk to the street, is that side street? Parsons? Yes, Parsons. You can park there any, anywhere. You can park from the crosswalk to Parsons yes. on either side? Yes, I believe so, yes. Not a fairly short distance. Uh, I mean, you can park past Parsons too. But okay. Next to cemetery, but you can't park from crosswalk, and that's pretty much uh, okay. north. So, so, yeah. so does the principal have a specific request that she wants? Well, that was my, my understanding was that somehow ticketing was a, a regularly occurring issue there, but mm -hmm. but maybe what the, maybe the phenomenon that people are detecting is when a car will park too close to someone's driveway, and maybe that's the issue. Right. In which yeah. case, we really don't have anything to do about that. I mean, that's, and that's, that's blocking prohibited, people's you know. driveways. Right, exactly. Okay. Um, I know that they do park along um, the side of the cemetery there mm -hmm. um, to come in. And also, people will park on Bridge Street itself mm -hmm. for pick up and drop off. So I don't know if she's discussing that. OK. I don't know how this plays into this at all, but I know it's such a tight urban area right through there heading up Union Street that they, cars will actually queue up in the middle of Union Street mm -hmm. um, and parents will run. So you've got houses and you've got parking on each side of the street and then you've got a line of cars parked in the middle of the street. If there was ever an incident where 
fire how to get through with their apparatus. Good luck. Mm -hmm. um, but they will line up right in the middle of the street and they'll run over and grab their kid and then they have to wait for, it's like airport parking. <laughs> yeah, right. And we have to wait for everybody to move up. Right. So I don't know if that, that, how that factors into what Beth is concerned about. That's interesting. Yeah. Just, just the queue then go into the parking lot and back out again? Or no, they just go out on the street. leave on the street and go grab their kid and then try to hit the bridge street. So. I, mean, I guess part of this is a longer term discussion about parking on the bus stop relocation. They looked at the bus stop relocation. They looked at the bus turnaround. It, it's, yeah. Okay. It's complicated. Okay. Well, then I, I suggest I'll bring some of this information to the principal and, and have a discussion, but I think it takes care of the agenda item as far as we're concerned. Unless there's any other discussion on this. Okay. Thank you. Um, We've done item 15 already. Just, um, and, and the following, the, the only remaining ones are quick follow-ups on things we've discussed before. I'm just wondering if um, the Department of Public Works can update us on um, dead end signs for, for Graves Avenue. It's in the work order system. I know the um, Graves that has been looked at specifically, okay. where they're gonna put the signs, okay. they can to make them effective. Okay. That's so all I can report on that, and I haven't seen anything on Wilson yet. Wilson is sort of a, a new, um, a new issue um, that I've heard from Wilson Avenue residents, pretty much what I've heard from Graves Avenue residents, and, and you all have heard from Graves Avenue residents um, a couple months ago, which is you get lots of cars that come in off a busy road, this time Con Street, and they don't always see that it's a dead end, and then they get to the end and try to turn around, and it causes havoc and mayhem and that kind of thing. And I guess a question I wanted to bring up with the commission is whether we would consider also pursuing dead end signs for Wilson Avenue, same way we did with Graves. <laughs> is that something that... Is it an issue? I mean, right. how big of an issue is that? Right. I mean, I've heard it from from, from several residents, but it's, it's anecdotal. Is it the kind of thing where it would be useful to have residents speak with us about the issue? I'd like to know if it's an issue, but we can always put up dead end signs and that's something that the commission wants at all dead end streets. We put up right. no dead end signs, we can do that. How many dead end streets do we have? A lot. A hundred? Uh, quite a few. Yeah. And what is the sign cost? Install? Post? Post install with labor, you're probably talking 250 a sign. We can just leave that there, um, and it might be might be residents want to come at some point and formulate a petition with the commission. But, but there's no kind of you know process in place that would screen out um, certain streets or studies. It's a dead end street, right? And it's not like it's easy to measure the problems that are associated with dead end streets generally. Right. Yeah. I mean, you like. Graves Avenue, there's quite a, few, quite a few residents on that street. Right. And I'm sure there's probably some effect to them versus Bottoms Row. Right. We have three homes on a long, dead end dirt driveway. Right. Okay. All right, well, that, I'm, I'm satisfied with that for now. Uh, any other discussion on this item? I'm just thinking that um, it's, a, it's, a <clears throat> that's a perfect example because I think the difference for me, as, as I think about it, would be urban versus rural. And I think that would be the guiding principle is what's the potential of someone in an urban environment who really doesn't know where they are heading down a dead end street and getting you know, having to turn around and then stuck in traffic, whatever. Um, so, the graves, that's urban. Um, I, where's Wilson exactly? It's off the cogs. It's right down here, just past the little convenience store. Oh, yeah, so that would fall into the same. Yeah, there's uh, probably... Randolph, is it Randolph? What's, what's Randolph Place? It's Randolph Place. Oh, off yeah, Pleasant Randolph Street. Place. There's there's another one. Yeah, so those would, uh, it would make sense that would be a good place for a dead end sign because the traffic line is so much greater than a place like Bob's Road where the traffic line is very different. Mm -hmm. and the traffic line is high edge, but not. Well, Clemens Street sees about 2,700 cars a day. Right. 
Yeah, it's it's nice gravel road though too, so you might start to think, oh, this isn't going anywhere. There's my shortcut. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if I can cross the river with this long turn. But, but yeah, that does seem like a common denom denominator is that how much, how heavy is the traffic on the road that the dead end sign comes off of? I think that's a valid point. And if you have a vehicle doing it once a week, is that an issue that you want these signs or is it a daily occurrence where right. it's actually affecting the residents and the streets? And right. And on Graves Avenue, that was very clear that it was a daily occurrence. You know? mm -hmm. uh, but I guess it's a question that you take literally street by street. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, we also discussed a couple months ago South Street, South Main Street line painting, and just wanted to follow up on that and see what, what we actually decided to do. Is it done? Is it done? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you, Mr. Lowenthal, brought up, you know, Oh, oh, sorry, South Main. So this is Leeds, not uh, Florence. Florence. Not Florence. Yep, Florence Center. Oh, it is Florence Center. Yep. Okay. Goes down to uh, not at down the street, down to the right. So I think we made a decision to go forward with it. Yes, I called Warner Brothers and asked them if they're interesting in. Uh, but since they're not really who's doing the light, uh, light painting because it's subcontractor who's doing They will ask subcontractor if they're interested to do, but when they will paint Sylvester Road, mm -hmm. if they're interesting, they will paint New South Street too. Not New South, uh, South Main Street. But still under question mark. Okay. Because right now we're getting, it's thermoplastic and we're getting already in the temperature. Right, right, right. right. The problem we're having with our streets department, they're still, they're still little potholes. Right. right. <laughs> Usually we stop that in June, but right. before that, yeah. it's just never ending supply now. Yeah, you have an enormous job. Mr. Kruger. So I was in here for that initial discussion. I, I live on South Main Street. So what was the, what was the oh. issue? They just needed a, a center line or something yes, like that? Yes, it was a center line. So it was that came out of the, Traffic calming application is something that might slow traffic down a little bit, provided them some lane guidance. And there was discussion, uh, Mr. Lowen thought you brought up, actually you cited research saying that sometimes when you paint it, it could have effective increasing speed. And, you know, I don't, I think we decided, you know, uh, <laughs> that to follow what the, the recommendation was from the original traffic calming study. And, process well well yeah it seems that if, uh, among the, the uh, research papers that I passed on to you guys and uh, that was not an exhaustive search it seems as if it was referring mostly to the effect on uh, narrow streets of putting center line in that it seemed to increase traffic speeds and I have the impression it's probably not applicable on this street. South Main is how wide there? I would imagine that the pavement width is probably 24. Oh, it is pretty narrow, okay. Well, 24, maybe 26, somewhere in that range. Well, let me suggest this then. Uh, do you already have good speed measurements? Um, I'm not sure how old are they. Yeah, I didn't review it before I came here. Well, wouldn't it be great to know before and after? Mm -hmm. Given that there is this research suggesting mm -hmm. that it might get worse. Yeah. That is a good start. Okay. Any other comments on this item? It sounds like where we're leaving it is we're going to see if Warner Brothers is, is interested in painting mm -hmm. uh, the line uh, when they do Sylvester Road. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So. <clears throat> I, I know you said something about the paving stuff, but when are they doing the Sylvester Road? It is this year. This is going to be the um, base course supposed to go down next week. So they already did the milling. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, that's right. They just put it down and yep. regraded. Uh, they do it regrading right now. Okay. Right. Okay, anything else on this? Okay. Last, last item, if there's nothing else on the other. <laughs> is item 18, 
And um, just a brief follow up on the on the traffic calming applications we received from Myrtle and Chestnut. I saw that there were some kind of measurement devices on Chestnut in this. <coughs> Four, uh, uh, four counters, um, one uh, right next to the bike, uh, bike path, which is green and on your left. And this traffic counter pretty much said that 80, 85th percentile, which is 85% of the cars, they're driving under the speed limit. Post the speed limit is 30 miles per hour and 85% of the uh, drivers, they're driving between 28 and 29 miles per hour. And 95% of the people, they're driving between 30 to 31. So we did not fi find any issues at this location. Also, on, we've installed two traffic counters on High Street, approximately 200 feet from the intersection. And on High Street, we have Prima Fasi, which is 30 miles per hour. And also, people usually drive under the speed limit. But the problem has occurred between High Street and Bridge Road. And uh, it's posted 30 miles per hour and less than 50% people who are actually driving under the speed limit. So most of the people driving over, um, so 50% of the people they are driving under 33, another 50, which is 33 and up. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, pretty much, that's ter people going towards Bridge, Ro Bridge Road. On looking at accident data, which is next page, I divided them by different locations and by year. Uh, one number which is really noticeable that happened in 2013 on the intersection of Main and Chestnut, which is next to Cooper, Cooper's restaurant or a Cooper store, happened seven accidents in one year. I was hoping to find anything uh, that is an accident similar what happened actually there and all of them were different. So nothing really was, was consistent. So that's what we found on Chestnut Street. So pretty much really one problematic area is between High Street and Bridge Road. Mm -hmm. we, have, we need to do something to slow down the traffic. Questions on Chestnut Street? Do you, um, you have a high number of accidents at Maine and Chestnut, but. There's two intersections at High and Chestnut, I'm not sure. Are they coming all northbound? They all going southbound? High and Chestnut? Yeah. Oh, you're talking about High and Chestnut then? You mean accidents? Maine and Chestnut. Oh, okay. where all the accidents were. You said none of them were similar. None of them were similar. Um, so pretty much people did not allow it to, they were trying to make a left turn without uh, coming out from Chestnut Street. And uh, pretty much it was totally different accidents. I could not really see any consistency. So there's no similar traffic movements going on that regular occurrence of accidents, okay. So does it follow that there's no recommendation for that part of the street? Just because um, um, no clear pattern that you could No address. clear pattern. Um, it's a lot of traffic <coughs> in that area. Um, it, uh, maybe just one accident said I did not see the car. Mm -hmm. 
but most of them is just to try to were in a rush mm -hmm. trying to make a left turn or maybe snow uh, and pretty much uh, most of the drivers they don't speed they drive it under speed limit. Do you have recommendations for the part of the road um, where the people are speeding between High Street and Bridge Road? Um, I guess the question would be what would be the next step in this, in this case? Start off with a little enforcement. <laughs> you going to stand out there with a the radar gun? Well, it's easy to say with the cheap absent. <laughs> 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 because his drones will patrol the area. It'd be interesting to see if the same consistent issue is between Strawberry Hill and Bridge Road also. You have an intersecting side street that's covered by that green box that goes up to Hillcrest and Fox Farms. It's called Strawberry Hill. I think that problem exists after that point too. I would imagine it does. Yeah, I imagine it does. I think it's just because it's a it's a straightaway. Right. Mm -hmm. They're all in the bridge road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that's interesting right. though, coming to High Street, it's completely <laughs> different. Well, I think because you're, you're coming up on a crust a little bit there, going to High Street from either direction, you're not sure what those people are going to do crossing High Street. Then you come down to the bike path, and there's another thing that slows you down. Yeah. There's just not enough room to get up speed or, or a desire to move the same race. Mr. Hartwell, and then Mr. Wilton. Yeah, uh, that's, it, that's it. I really like that perception is that as you're <clears throat> coming into town from this particular point on, on uh, Chestnut, you're, you're now in view of an intersection. And then there is this other crosswalk beyond, which is the bike path. But heading out of town, there are no queues like that. So I, I think maybe motors feel permission to accelerate. So and it's, it's likely uh, uh, repeat drivers, too. So they sort of know what to expect and what not to expect. Well, that says we should build some new intersections and bike paths along the way. I think that's right. <laughs> or just signs for them. Just throw stuff out in the street right now. <laughs> What I was going to say is I'm in, I'm in favor of, uh, of you guys pursuing some traffic calming solution here, but not necessarily putting it ahead of other highly prioritized projects in the city. So I think this should be considered in, in the overall traffic calming program according to its ranking. So I don't know if it's been ranked. Uh, yeah, we haven't ranked it yet. Okay. Um, I was curious, uh, Alex, do you? Have dates on these? Was this recent? Uh, this go. It, uh, this was two weeks ago. Okay. So the, this was uh, around October first. Ah, uh, yeah. And um, and did did you have all the other data that would come? You typically have you have only trips. Uh, ADT. Yeah. ADT. I I do have some. It's fine. It's fine. I just want to make sure that you did. And we collect all the data. Yeah, we yeah, collect yeah. all. Okay. I, I actually like the way this looks. It's easier to mm. understand. And having the map is very good. I mean, that, yeah. was, that was the big concern was people speeding. Yes. It was about the traffic on the street. It's just how fast they were going. Right. Mm. But it's really nice to, it's, uh, if you're putting out the same equipment, then obviously you have the, yeah. the, the volume uh, data also. Uh, Chisholm Street has approximately 2,000 vehicles per day. Yeah. And High Street. Um, um, east side, which is a really short distance, it's 600 vehicles per day, and west side is 1,200. Wow, 600 to 1,200? Everyone's avoiding downtown Florence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how about, uh, sorry, Chestnut Street, you said it's about 2,000? Chestnut Street, yeah, 2,000. Okay. And just to Mr. Hargrove's point about you see a crosswalk from one direction, but nothing from the other. I recall that was raised by some of the, the, the residents so that might be an outcome that you know if they could if they had their way they might want which would be a, ch a, cross, a crosswalk farther up Chestnut Street. Well that's what I was wondering if, if, if there's sidewalks near Strawberry Hill would that be an ideal location? Mm -hmm. If there's sidewalks on both sides I don't recall offhand. There okay. there's, okay. there's not a sidewalk on Strawberry Hill or on that side of Chestnut it stops okay. a little west of so there's, so there's a sidewalk on the west side of Chestnut, but it's going to go all the way to Strawberry Hill. 
That's right. Okay. You say the west side of Chestnut is a. It's on the Strawberry Hill side. Stra okay. So there is a, 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 a sidewalk there on both sides of Strawberry Hill? There's, there's a sidewalk there that probably stops at about uh, house number 130. Okay. And goes all the way down to High Street. And then the one on the other side starts at Bridge Road and stops about uh, just after Strawberry Hill, I think. Maybe House 145, 151. Well, so maybe that's where the crosswalk goes. So you have a sidewalk on Chestnut Street, a half of it's on one side, right. half on the other. Yeah. I think what you have is on the Strawberry Hill side after House Number 130, you have a fairly steep embankment going up the end, mm -hmm. if I recall correctly. Yeah. It's interesting. It seems like the um, when Mr. Delapeno was here, they were talking about the section down by the bike path. Yeah, that's they're, they're and, and, and that's where yeah, right. it's going exactly. to the speed limit. Because he was talking about racing the bike path or um, putting in signage or something. Right, and get racing to get to the traffic lights where there are green people speeding up. And, yeah. No. So it's the value of data. Yes, and. Uh, Just because, um, just because most of the traffic is obeying the speed limit doesn't mean that it's not going too fast. So um, what we don't address with these data is, is the speed limit the right number for a dense historic residential neighborhood with a lot of cross traffic and, and pedestrians and bicycles. Keeping in mind that at around 30, between 30 and 35 miles an hour is a split point between the chance of a pedestrian getting hit by a car surviving and not surviving. I would say it's more 25. No, it's, it's between 30 and 35. Okay. About a 50% chance of survival. And 50%? About, about a 50% chance of survival. It's oh, okay. at around 33 miles an hour. So, you know, 30 miles an hour, it's not great. You yeah. know, I wouldn't take those odds. Well, so, actually, the number I was remembering you had 25 miles per hour or less, your chances of survival are very high. Okay. That's what I was thinking. So I was thinking these coming into town were, um, well, 33 was a high speed limit. So still, yeah, it's a dangerous speed if you're going to get hit, of course. So I'm sure the impressions of residents there seeing cars going 30 miles an hour is that's too damn fast for, sure. for this residential neighborhood. So the only way you can change it is to do a speed regulation study and they're going to look at these numbers and go according to that. I disagree. It's not the only way you can change it. It's the only way you can change the official speed limit. That's correct. But we can do whatever traffic common we want to, mm -hmm. to make the traffic go the speed that we think is appropriate for, mm -hmm. for the neighborhood. So as I said, I'm in favor of that, but in the context of the larger program. So. When, when does the ranking of this take place? It's something that you just have to sit down and do and determine the number. Mm -hmm. okay. When you do that ranking, I mean, I mean, obviously, building painting a crosswalk is easier than building a speed bump. Mm -hmm. So, is the crosswalk part of it somehow rise in the ranking? But the speed bump crosswalk is actually is quite involved. Oh, you start looking at good, sorry. Any ramps and signage? I mean, it's, yeah. we're talking usually probably spending five to ten thousand dollars mm. versus the speed bumps that we typically put in. Material wise, it's costing about a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars. Okay. So, but then in the other direction, then I mean, there's one, the one that's more easily achievable and the one that's less costly. Does that kind of rise up on the list above the other options? And we also have to look at drainage, what's out there, make sure that we're going to have proper stormwater drainage pool installed mm -hmm. and kind of a vertical rise in the road, mm -hmm. make sure water's not going to get trapped. Even if it doesn't extend across the entire road, you have spaces on the side for mm -hmm. water to flow. No. Yeah, but, but the plow can't plow that because it's riding up on a hump. So that area is always going to be filled with snow and ice during the water. Okay, well, so what, what is the next step on, on Chestnut Street? What, what, 
Services Commission. Do you need a motion from us Ned, to request the DPW to, uh, uh, to rank it? Yeah. That, so you need a motion for that? Okay, so moved. Okay, so we'll call makes the motion. Second. Mr. Harwell, second. Any discussion on motion to recommend a ranking? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Great. Well, thank you for doing all this, all this, all this work, and yeah. that is is excellent. Uh, yes, sir. Right. Alex, just just a question: When you conduct these studies, uh, do you do them under ideal weather conditions, various um, times of the day, or? No, it's actually I set up, I uh, install traffic counters for one week period. Yeah. And uh, pretty much, I mean, any weather will work except snow. <laughs> right. But uh, no idea. Uh, when I'm installing it, make sure it's not raining because they would not stick. But uh, if it's going to rain in the middle of the study, it will not, it will not disturb anything. So you're going to wait for a good spate of weather in the middle of the summer? No, it's not you, want, you want a true condition. I need just one day to install it. Yep. And then pretty much if it, weather will change, it will not disturb uh, my data collection. Thanks. We move on to Myrtle Street. Uh, Take it away. So honestly, when I did a study, I was surprised that we actually received it. Uh, publication. Uh, Prima Facie is 30 miles per hour on this uh, road. 85th uh, percentile, which is 85% of the people, they're driving uh, to State Street between 23 to 24 miles per hour, or to King Street from 26 to 27. Even if you take almost 100, which is 95% of the people, they're driving up to 29. Uh, so according to Prima Facie, speed is not, not an issue here. Do you know volume data for the street Alex? Yes. ADT is a uh, 650 meters per day. How many? Six fifty. Six fifty. In either direction. Both directions, yeah. And this is also around October first. Uh, no, it was last week. Last week. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. When you say prima prima facie. Does that just mean there's no posted speed limit, but that's what yeah, appears it's, to be the uh, speed limit? Yeah, if it's not uh, posted. Then you have to go to Prima Fossi and 30 miles per hour is uh, in business district or if it's residential and distance between houses less than 200 feet, that's 30 miles per hour. And then it's 40 miles and if it's divided uh, highway, it's 50. Thank you. And school's almost 20. Did you, have any, did you have more to present? Tonight? Accident data is uh, three accidents happened uh, in the last five years. All of them were at intersections on two on King Street and Myrtle, and one is on State and Myrtle. So, elections. Okay. Is there a question over here? Oh. Refresh my memory. Is this an active application? Yes. We uh, received it. Yes. So the gentleman came in who was complaining about the speed of the cars. Speed on. Is is the volume of cars out of out of the ordinary for these streets? Six fifty. It's a small side street between two well-traveled streets. Mm -hmm. Also, I have I think it's a Cumberland Farms there on the corner yeah. or a Dairy Mart or something. Given that there is a um, uh, traffic calming application for State Street that is at the height of, that right at the top of the list or second on the list currently, that would include necessarily an intersection with Myrtle whenever we get to it, my suggestion would be that we not approve Myrtle as a separate uh, traffic calming program or project, uh, but that we do respond to the applicants the promise that Myrtle Street is necessarily going to be included in the State Street treatment. 
by you making that, that motion. Sure. So, but there's no treatment at the moment for Myrtle Street. I'm sorry? There's no treatment proposed for Myrtle Street. But there's a, but there, no, but there is, uh, I would say, the high likelihood that the city will treat State Street, mm -hmm. including the intersection with Myrtle Street. Okay. Although, what would that be? I, I, I just mean explicitly treating the intersection as in. I, I, I thought you meant treating something on Myrtle Street as part of the state. That's street. not what I meant. Okay. No, I just meant any treatment of State Street is going to impact Myrtle Street, presumably for the better. Which might, doesn't necessarily mean we're going to build traffic calming device on Myrtle as a result of State. Not this is going to be part of the consideration. Okay. But so in, my, in my view, if we if we approve this. Uh, it's going to show up pretty close to the bottom of the list. And if, would you agree if, if the rankings are not going to boost this very high at all? And it would be sitting there for years and years. Okay, so your motion is, is to is for a, neg a negative recommendation. Correct. Okay, and was, was there a second? I did second. Mr. Barrow will second that. Is there any further discussion on our recommendation in this case? Okay, all in favor of the negative recommendation? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Thank you. And, and thank you very much for doing all this data gathering and all yes, this excellent, excellent work. Yeah. Really good job. We can't say it's a job. You can <laughs> play it up. <laughs> my, my only request is would you be able to email this to the, the commission? So yes. We have electronic version of this. I will email to you. Like to go now, the tribute. Okay. Thank you. Um, any new business? Just a question about that. So, how do you, what's the process of notifying the applicant of our decision on that? I guess I would volunteer to uh, the secretary of that. We <laughs> 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 dad wants to hit you after saying <laughs> <laughs> I, I volunteer to do that. Thanks. Um, any new business? It's a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Mr. Palmer had second. Uh, uh, Moves to adjourn. Mr. Wallenfall seconds. And, um, any opposed? Any abstentions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.